Thank you. Let's go on a journey. Let's all go on a journey to Afghanistan today. Now, if we're going to go there, we're going to have to think some terms of how we would describe it. For many people, we would describe Afghanistan as war-torn, terrible destruction, tragic deaths. Others of us would perhaps describe it in terms of poppies, or opium, or the drug trade. Still others of us would think of it as being isolated, run by warlords, and full of desperation. Read in a book recently that on a good day, Afghanistan could be considered medieval. I asked one of my colleagues at UC Davis, who's from Afghanistan, if he were to describe it in one word, what would that word be? And the word he used was terrible. To kind of put that in perspective for you, Afghanistan has the highest infant mortality rate of any country in the world by a long shot. It also is tied amongst five countries for the lowest average life expectancy of any country in the world. And faced with concerns of opium, poppies, drug trade, and the rest of the world, including the US, and faced with the economic situation of Afghanistan, generally we would have one of two responses. The first response is, send in more troops. This drug problem is a real problem. The terrorism is a real problem. This war is a problem. Having impoverished countries is a problem. We should send in more troops. Another response would be, hey, this is just not our deal. We shouldn't be there at all. And don't get me wrong, there is time and place to send in the troops. And there is a time and place to not be involved. But what if there was a third way to help solve these problems. What would there be, what if there was a third way that involved basically stabilizing the economy by stabilizing agriculture? So I asked my colleague from Afghanistan, so if that was the case, stabilizing the economy, stabilizing the agriculture, what crops would we go after? What crops would we want to provide information to help Afghans move from opium to another crop? And he said, of course, you're thinking about this all wrong. Don't think about it as crops. Think about it as the plate of what Afghans eat. Far and away, number one, bread. Number two, rice. Number three, potatoes. Number four, fruit. And in a very, very, very special event, maybe some meat. So then you look and you go, but everybody grows opium. Everybody grows poppies. It turns out, far and away, far and away, the number one crop in Afghanistan is wheat. Far and away, two orders of magnitudes more farmers grow wheat than grow poppies. And here is wheat being harvested, and in the very traditional, perhaps even medieval way, the kernels being separated from the chaff. Wheat is then Traded, measured, eaten, and as you guessed, the primary source of bread. Obviously, it's not just wheat. There are many other very important fruits, vegetables, and crops. Pomegranates. Pom uh, Afghanistan used to be the largest grower of pomegranates in the world. Used to be. It's not coming back. We all know the importance of pomegranates to the world. Grapes, it's not for wine, but for raisins. Grapes is the second most important crop in Afghanistan. No one really knows much about growing it. And then almonds and other nuts, and then a variety of other fruits and vegetables. And as I understand it, the most delicious watermelon in the world is available in Afghanistan. So now, everybody, close your eyes. We're all going on this journey. You are either 
perhaps a USDA field advisor. Perhaps you're a member of an international nonprofit organization. Perhaps you're a member of a US National Guard team as part of an agribusiness development team heading to Afghanistan. Perhaps you are a Marine. Perhaps you're from a national or other international aid organization from anywhere in the world. You are going to help learn about agriculture. Open your eyes. You know all about agriculture. What's the first thing you have to deal with? Turns out it's livestock, because in the village you go to, that's their problem, livestock. The only way we're going to be able to successfully move from one economy to another economy is to be able to provide information, provide help, provide sustainability. So let's pretend we're on this journey together. We're all in Afghanistan. We're all trying to improve the capability of a wide variety of agriculture, livestock, water su supplies. And some of us are self-proclaimed city boys, and others of us are very exper experienced farm girls. And, but we don't know anything about Afghan agriculture. So what are the kind of questions that we would ask? We're trying to change the world. What are the questions that we would ask? First question, obviously, we would ask is, who are they? And what do they need? Not what do we want to provide, what do they need? The second question is, how do we make sure the solution we're doing is good? It may be work great in the US or wherever we're from, but it may not work in Afghanistan. The other one is, how do we effectively communicate? How do we effectively communicate the idea? How do we effectively be able to transmit it from what we have to the Afghan farmers? Keep in mind, in English, written English is not the problem. Literacy is the problem. Literacy rate in Afghanistan is about 30%. So 30% of people in Afghan Afghanistan can read their own language, much less English. How do we effectively communicate? How do we get the point across? And how do we collect feedback? Now, as it turns out, there's a very broad spectrum of people who are trying to accomplish this very simple goal, bring some level of peace. I doubt there'll ever be peace, but some level of peace, some level of stability in a terribly war-torn, terribly devastated country. And so we play a very small part of that. What we do is we provide credible, relevant information for those helping farmers in Afghanistan. So what are the lessons we've learned as we've embarked in this project of helping a wide variety of people like you to help farmers? The first thing we've learned is sustainability is not easy. People who go over, they go over for seven months, 11 months, 13 months. Turns out the seasons don't operate in that same way. It turns out when people leave, the last thing they do, can think of doing is telling the next people what's going on. They have much bigger things on their mind. And projects don't last from one year to another to another year. So, so being able to provide a sustainable set of information can help bring this piece to basically a revolving door of people in Afghanistan. The second thing is, Good solutions are demand-driven. In other words, instead of figuring out what we want to do, let's figure out what they want to do. And they're very demand-driven. We've learned that providing this information, we've been able to save two months of work, make two months more effective by providing this information. And finally, information needs to be easily available. I dare say the internet connectivity to anybody's house here in the US is greater than the connectivity to the entire country of Afghanistan. Being able to make it easily available, easily accessible, easily reachable is critical to make this be a success. We have websites, iPad apps, Android apps, works on your iPhone. What are some of the results of this work? Having 10 and 12 year old boys raise goats to help provide for their family. Building hoop houses so you can grow very, very, very valuable vegetables longer, greater, for greater time greater seasons, vaccinating animals so they can live longer. So we 
end where we began. We began with a choice of sending in more troops or running away. But we believe that there's a way in the middle that would not only work for Afghanistan, but for many other war-torn countries in the world. And this is actually a ribbon-cutting ceremony of a new project. So this is something I think about every day, and I hope it crosses your mind once in a while. Of perhaps there's another choice to bring in peace to the world, other than sending in more troops, other than not getting involved, of building stability in countries, to bring peace in countries, to bring a greater and better world. Thank you.